years. Uh, I, I have this habit of going through a scripture, a, 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 uh, a book of the Bible, a scripture at a time. And so um, we, I continue that tradition right through whatever happens, like Christmas, Easter, whatever, uh, because we have other ways of celebrating and, and uh, knowing the Bible a little bit deeper uh, as we go helps us all. So uh, we are in the book of Corinthians, and it just happens that uh, today we talk about uh, gifts. And uh, um, we, I, the scripture that's on the screen, the, the title there, gives you an idea where we're at if you get lost. And for me, for I, when I get lost. Um, so um, we'll, we'll dig in. Um, and Christmas has become centered on gifts. Uh, everybody thinks they have to get a better gift than someone else or they, they need to give a gift. What we sometimes forget is our spiritual gifts. So it fits sort of right in with the season. So, uh, and as John read concerning spiritual gifts, um, were the Corinthians, before Paul came and started a church there and converted people, they were idolaters. They worshipped the false gods that um, the Romans, Romans had, thousands of false gods. And um, because, uh, and then that meant that they were surrounded by evil spirits as they were worshipping these false gods. So Paul came and, and, and they converted to Christianity, but now they needed a way to determine what was real? What is truth? And so that's where Paul comes in. And Paul knew that Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So that on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? And do many deeds of power in your name, then I will declare to them, I never knew you go away from you evildoers. And one of the things that the Corinthians were kind of stuck on was the gift of tongues. And, and, and you may have heard discussion about tongues. We don't get them real deep into that. This Sunday we will, in a couple chapters later. Um, but they were kind of stuck on the book of tongue, or on, on the gift of tongues. So, uh, for this scripture here, uh, the evildoers had, been, had not submitted to the Lord. So they, they, had, they thought they had these gifts of prophecy and stuff like that, but they, they weren't using their gifts to lift up Jesus. So back to the question of the Corinthians, how do we know who the evildoers are? How can we tell? Well, Paul gives a test to help us discern whether or not a messenger is really from God. And that test is, does he or she confess Jesus as Lord? So don't naively accept the words of anybody that claims to speak for God, including me. Check them out. Test them by finding out how they live and what they teach about Jesus. So verse 4 through 7. Now there are many gifts, and but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So the kicker is, each of us, each believer, is given a spiritual gift. Now we don't necessarily think about that very often. But we are. We all have a spiritual gift. There is no believer that, has, that doesn't have a function to perform. All of us have a function to use that gift for. And the gifts are for the profit of the entire body. It's not just for us, it's for the whole body. They're not, the gifts aren't for self-display or even for self-gratification but in order to help somebody else, 
help the body. Now some, and this is, the, I'll, I'll get in real trouble here, but that's all right. Some musicians seem to think that all they need is talent and training. They think if they have that, the Lord can't get along without them. The Holy Spirit can use the abilities of a believer if the believer gives them over. But talent alone is nothing unless it's under the control of the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, some have no particular natural talent. And they say that since they can't sing in the choir or teach in the Sunday school, there's nothing for them to do but sit in the pew. And that is one of the most tragic thoughts in the church. Each of us have a gift of some type. And what is the purpose of the gift? Glorify God. To share with the body. It's to build up the church. Not to lift the individual person, but to lift the church. Verse 8 through 11. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit who lots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. A lot to each one individually means that the Holy Spirit decides which gifts each of us should have. We are responsible to sharpen and use our gifts, but we can't take credit for what God has given us. And so there was a list of gifts. I'm going to talk about two of them. The gift of prophecy in its primary sense signified that a person received direct revelation from God and transmitted them to others. Sometimes the prophets predicted future events, but more often they just gave tongue to the mind of God. They just spoke what God spoke to them. And since the Bible is complete, we reject any so-called prophet who claims to have additional truth. I have new light. We, we reject that because the Bible's done. We also use the word prophet to describe any preacher who declares the word of God authoritatively and effectively. So uh, you, might, you might just call a good preacher a prophet. Prophecy can also include the ask, ascription of praise to God and the encouragement of strengthening of his people. And I've, I've got scriptures that go with that if you want to. I can give them to you later if you're interested in that. The other gift that I mentioned is discerning of the spirits. And that describes the power to detect whether a prophet or another person is speaking by the Holy Spirit or speaking by Satan. A person with this gift has a special ability to discern if a man is an imposter or an opportunist that is taking advantage of a bad situation. Verse 12 to 13. For just as the body is one with is one and has many members, and all the members of the body through many are one body. So it is with Christ, for in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So each believer has a specific function that is necessary for the whole body. The parts are different for a purpose, and their differences should work together. So as Christians, there's two common errors we need to avoid. One, being too proud of our abilities. And two, thinking we have nothing to give. We, we're, we need to fall in between those two somewhere. And instead of comparing ourselves to someone else that has a super ability... We are called to use our different gifts together to build the kingdom. Verse 14 through 18. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. 
If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would make it, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would make it not any less a part of the body. If the body, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one as he chose. So that's, you can see that's where the skit came from, that the hand just can't go off to Disney World by itself. We're all in this together. And some of the parts of the body that we don't see and don't talk about and don't do much are very important, like the kidney. You got to have a kidney, right? Each person in the body has a role. If a seemingly insignificant part is taken away, the whole body becomes less effective. Thinking your gift is more important than someone else is spiritual pride. We should not look down on those who seem unimportant. We should not be jealous of those who have impressive gifts. Instead, we must use the gifts we have been giving, given and encourage others to use their gifts. 19 to 25. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As, if, as it is, there are many members, but yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members, we are, are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. So like I said, the Corinthians were hung up on the gift of tongues. If that was all they had was a gift of tongues, they wouldn't be much of a functioning body. Other gifts, though less spectacular and less sensational, are absolutely necessary. Even someone stuck at home can pray, can write letters, can call people, can encourage and show compassion to other people in the body. Too often, we're jealous of those who have fantastic talents and separate ourselves from those who seem to have none. Believers are in the world together. It's not just us and God, but we grow, we grow stronger by getting involved in the lives of others in the Spirit. Verse 26. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Anything that hurts another Christian should cause us sorrow. Likewise, because all gifts from God, if we see another Christian honored, we shouldn't feel jealous, but we should rejoice with that person in the honor of glory of God. In verse 27 to 31, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, and God had appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. When Paul says, but earnestly desire the best gifts, he's speaking to the Corinthians as a local church, not as individuals. We know this because the verb is plural in the original. He is saying that as an assembly, they should desire have, to have in their midst a good selection of gifts. In other words, we want to grow the kingdom. We want to bring in more people so they can use their gifts, so we can share in their gifts together to glorify God. 
The best gifts are those that are the most useful for the body rather than those that are spectacular. All gifts are given by the Holy Spirit and no gifts should be despised. And the chapter ends with, and yet I will show you a more excellent way. Now with those words, Paul is introducing us to the next chapter, which is chapter 13. Anybody know what chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians is called? The love chapter. Very good. Very good. What he is saying is that the more mere possession of gifts is not as important as the exercise of giving those gifts in love. Tom. Tom. was if you didn't speak in tongues, you were not Christian. Now, at that time, I didn't, I didn't really know because I think I, I, I wanted to speak, you know, in tongues. So I was led by what, not knowing that, you know, that they were off. You know, they were like gypsies, you know, and they came in. Yeah. And uh, so they said, well, if anybody wants to stay after church, uh, we'll see what we can do. So I remember we went into a side room, and literally, they were moving my jaw to try to get me to speak in tongues. Woo. And uh, uh, that was a big lesson. I mean, I was a lot younger at the time, but you need to know scripture because, you know, speaking is a gift, but it's not, it's not you know, to be Christian. You know, so I mean, it was, it was a good learning lesson. So for those of you at home, Tom was talking about a, a, a group that thought speaking in tongues was, was the only gift that was important. And uh, like I said, we'll be dealing with that in, I think it's chapter 14 down the road. But, um, uh, and, and there's some controversy about what speaking in tongues is. We know that on, on Pentecost, that the disciples were speaking and people from all other countries could understand what was being said in their own language. And that's different than the group that you were talking about that, that has a language that's of its own. And there's nothing wrong, you know, with speaking in tongues. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, we get, we got to be careful that... that we, we don't use speaking as tongues as an emotional high. And in the, in the Church of the Brethren, we don't, we don't believe in emotional high. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe we should sometimes. But you've got to discern and count the cost and discern the spirit um, and um, make decisions not based on high emotions but on the whole word of God. So back to what chapter 13 is going to be, love thinks of others, not of ourselves, of what we can do, but what did the body need. Christ gave us the gift of eternal life with him. That gift becomes more valuable as we share our spiritual gifts with others. Overall, though, it's not the spiritual gift that matters. It's the state of the heart. Let's pray. God, we thank you for each person here. For each person you have called into the body. For the gifts that they have. Some of the gifts may be spectacular. Some of them may seem hidden. But you know each person's heart and the importance they have in the body of Christ. We celebrate all that you have done for us. And we seek to glorify you in word, in song, and in deed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our last